the Apple iPhone 13 may be coming with one of the most wanted features and I'll be sharing the details right after this. Today's video is sponsored by the Moffdex Snap-on Phone Stand and Wallet. The new Moffdex for the iPhone 12 is the first stand and wallet that fully supports MagSafe. It's a snap-on stand that once attached to your phone, you can use it as a phone stand to hold it in the desired position hands-free. Whether it be work or play, the Moffdex Snap-on Stand and Wallet allows portrait mode which is great for meetings, web browsing and FaceTime and we also have the landscape option for those wanting to watch media or even do some gaming. With a secure magnetic locking mechanism, it can be used anywhere you like and it's going to stay in the desired position you choose. It can even be used as a hand grip when you're out and about on the go. On top of it being an incredible phone stand, it also holds up to three cards with RFID blocking to make you feel safe and secure. With its simple magnetic attachment, the Moffdex Snap-on Phone Stand and Wallet is a great addition to any iPhone 12 and we also get the additional magnet mount meaning we can literally mount our iPhone 12 anywhere. The Moffdex Snap-on Stand and Wallet is compatible with all versions of the iPhone 12 and you can get yours today by clicking the links down in the description below. So today we've got incredible news on the Apple iPhone 13. We've got lots of hardware news to share along with a new feature that may finally make its way back to the iPhone 13 but then something else that may be leaving. Before we get started though please like the video if you're a fan of Apple and let me know in the comments what country you're watching today's video from. But first up, we've got news that Apple are going to be making their own millimeter wave 5G modem to feature in the Apple iPhone 13. While they used Qualcomm's modem in their previous release, an Apple Insider report states that they're going to use their own 5G modems in the iPhone 13 and even the new iPad Pro. Now, this is a great way for them to keep costs down for a device that we already know is going to be pricey, so this is only good news. Next up, we've got more news that the iPhone 13 will be coming with a periscope camera system for optical zoom thanks to some supply chain info. Interestingly enough, many of the parts are coming from Samsung, although not directly. Samsung are going to be supplying LG and LG will be making them for the folded zoom camera module. While the iPhones currently have digital zoom, the more you zoom in, the worse the quality gets as it's simply just cropping, but with the folded periscope technology, it has the lens sitting at a horizontal angle inside the phone, we should expect to see between 3 and 10 times optical zoom. Its predecessor delivered a great overall camera system, but Apple is working on taking mobile photography to the very next level when it comes to the iPhone 13. We'll see an increase in sensor size for the iPhone 13. When it came to the predecessor, it was actually only the Pro Max that got the larger sensor, but according to reliable leaker Ross Young, both the iPhone 13 Pro and the Pro Max are getting at a 1.9 micrometer sensor. A larger sensor means larger pixels, and this results in more light for the sensor, which in turn can give better image quality. Both Ross Young and Ming Chi Kuo also state that we're going to be getting sensor shift stabilization in the iPhone 13 Pro and the Pro Max. This will not only result in better stabilization but also improve the low light performance. Next up we've got news that the iPhone 13 may follow in the footsteps of its predecessor but take things one step further. This year we had no power brick inside the packaging and it looks like next year we won't even be getting a USB cable. A recent survey from Apple has been asking consumers about various aspects of their iPhones and there was some focus on what items in the packaging were actually used and specifically detailing the USB cable. Now one of the questions asked in this year's survey was if consumers use the power adapter in the box so it looks like we could well be losing it all. The same survey however also focuses on users opinions of Face ID and if it works well and if the user chooses no they can select from a variety of different reasons one of them being I prefer Touch ID. Given that so many have had issues with masks and Face ID I think many would have chosen to at least mention Touch ID and to be honest I'm still confused as to why it's not there. Touch ID can be well implemented under the display as many phones do this already with an ultrasonic in-display fingerprint scanner you get accurate and secure unlocks so it seems a no-brainer. Of course it will add a little bit of cost to the device as well as some internal space being used but it's something that I definitely want to see make its way into the iPhone 13. We also have many concept renders appearing online like the ones used in this video but when it comes to the design it's still not anywhere near being finalized. These renders 
are also based on predictions and not leaks. As soon as we get some solid information on the design, I'll be sharing it with you guys straight away, but we do have a little bit of information already when it comes to the specs. So for those interested, we'll run through it now and we're going to go through the whole of the iPhone 13 series. For my regular viewers, you guys have already seen this, so just jump to the next video. But if you are new here, then don't forget to hit subscribe and we'll get right into it. So to start with, we've got the entry level model, the Apple iPhone 13 mini. It's expected to be a 5.4 inch iPhone with an OLED Super Retina display. It's expected to have a resolution of 2340 by 1080 and this is going to give us 465 pixels per inch. It's very unlikely for high refresh rates on the lower models, so expect a 60Hz display, but we should be seeing this shorter notch. With Apple continuing to prove that huge amounts of RAM are just not required, it should be equipped with 4 gigs of RAM and a choice of 64, 128 or 256 storage. We're expecting another aluminium frame to reduce the cost, although again, the body should be looking similar to that of the Pros. And the iPhone 13 mini is going to come with dual cameras on the rear, consisting of a 12 megapixel wide angle and a 12 megapixel ultra wide, and it will of course ship with iOS 15. For those that want the 4 gigs of RAM with 64 gigs of storage, it's likely going to launch at a price of around $700. For 128 gig, it should be around $750, and for the 256 gig, it should be around $850. Next up, we've got the iPhone 13. The iPhone 13 is going to have a 6.1 inch OLED display with a resolution of 2532 by 1170 and this gives us 460 pixels per inch. Again, we only expect this model to be having a 60Hz display and no LTPO technology, but again, it may have a smaller notch. We expect 4 gigs of RAM along with a choice of 64, 128 or 256 storage and the phone should have an aluminium frame. We're expecting a 12 megapixel wide angle and a 12 megapixel ultra wide giving us another dual camera setup and the phone is going to ship with iOS 15. For the 64 gig model we're expecting around $800. If you want 128 gigs it should be around $850. For the 256 gig version it should be around $950. Next up, we've got the iPhone 13 Pro, and here's where things are going to change a little bit, although we are expecting a similar looking device. The iPhone 13 Pro is expected to come with a 6.1 inch OLED display with a resolution of 1170 by 2532, and this gives us 460 pixels per inch. Not only is it going to be brighter, but it's also going to be using LTPO technology and provide us with a 120Hz variable refresh rate at a full resolution. We're not expecting any increase of RAM as the A15 is going to be more than capable, so expect 6 gigs of RAM with a choice of 128, 256, 512 and maybe even a huge 1 terabytes of storage. Because this is the more premium model, we also expect another still frame and on the iPhone 13 Pro we should be getting a quad camera setup. This is going to be a 12 megapixel wide angle, a 12 megapixel ultra wide, a 12 megapixel telephoto and a lidar sensor. The phone will of course ship with iOS 15 and when it comes to pricing we do expect some small price increases with this new display technology so we're estimating that 128 gigs may be around $1050, for 256 it could be around $1150, for 512 it could be $1350 and if the 1 terabyte happens then we could expect a whopping $1550. Now finally, we've got the most premium model, the iPhone 13 Pro Max. The iPhone 13 Pro Max is expected to come with a 6.7 inch OLED display with a resolution of 1128 by 2778 giving us 458 pixels per inch. Again, it's going to be brighter, it's also going to be using the LTPO technology and provide us with that 120Hz variable refresh rate display. We can expect 6 gigs of RAM with a choice of 128, 256, 512 and again if the leaks are true then 1 terabyte of storage. Again, we're expecting another still frame on the iPhone 13 Pro Max and another quad camera setup. Again, this will be a 12 megapixel wide angle, 12 megapixel ultra wide, a 12 megapixel telephoto and the LiDAR sensor. Now the phone is of course going to ship with iOS 15 and when it comes to pricing again we expect this increase so we're estimating for 128 gig it's $1150, for 256 gig it could be $1250, for 
512, it could be 1450. And if this one terabyte storage happens, then we could see around $1,650, which is an incredibly huge price tag. So of course, with so many leaks floating around, things won't be clear until we get closer to launch and prototypes are made and hopefully leaked. As always though, if anything surfaces, I'm going to be sharing it with you guys straight away, but I'd like to know your thoughts in the comments. Who out there is excited for the Apple iPhone 13? What do you think about having no cable at all? And who wants to see Touch ID return? But thanks for watching the video. If you liked it, smash the thumbs up. If you didn't, hit the thumbs down twice. And I'll see you guys in the next one.